I mean, we're twinning hard. We're twinning so hard. And our get ready with me envy or my envy with you. It's it's kind of nice that it changed because <laughs> you, I, I mean, we've gone in phases. Do you actually told me as an adult that you stole my clothes when we were kids? Yes, I did. I and had I didn't major know. outfit. I well, didn't it was know. like a borrow and not return. I don't know if it was like, I'm going to steal this. I don't think I ever realized they were missing. <laughs> exactly, because you had so much clothes growing up and I didn't. And I, I was jealous of you. And now it's like, it's turned because every time I'm at your house, I'm like, I'm going in the closet and you're like, you feel bad. You're like, you can have it. <laughs> so I leave with, I actually bring an extra suitcase now. I don't feel bad. I just love giving stuff I know away. you're a giver. I love You've giving always been stuff a giver. people. I literally, like, you know, I make boxes for my everyone, sisters and I'm like, yeah, always giving I stuff know. away. I mean, you know, you I get, think giving you actually feels better than getting way. Like a hundred percent. I love gift giving. You know that. I'm like, you're the best gift giver. I listen. Like, I think people just don't listen. So if you're like, listen to people talk, you're like, oh, they need that. And I make a note of it. And then I end up buying, like, you know, I sent you the Yankees hat and then you're like, by the way, I bought it for myself. No, but you're super thoughtful with your, your gifts. I try to be. You've always been that way. Yeah. It's fun for me. You have to listen to people. That's true. And then make notes. (laughs) <laughs> I love that tip. That's such a good one. Okay. There is truly, I was like thinking about this because I'm like, oh, family. I don't think anyone in my life like really knows me like you do through all of the phases and the stages of life. Of course, like siblings, but I think 100% when it comes to friends. Like, yes. We've known each other since the fourth grade grade. Mm -hmm. and we've been best friends ever since. So how many years, Chris? I mean, math is not my strong subject, (laughs) but it's, I don't know, a long time. It's a long time. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost 30 years. Yeah. I think that you are really close to your sisters, but, or Laura, very close to Laura. Yeah. But I think she was too young then. Right. So it's, yeah, she just was a lot younger than us at the time or felt like it. Yeah. And I think you tell your friends, obviously. Things that you don't tell your siblings. That you want to tell your siblings. At least as a a child. Yes. Yeah. So let's bring it back, girl, because people are dying for the juice. Okay. (laughs) Let's take me back. I don't kiss and tell. (laughs) Um, So we actually met in fourth grade. I was new new girl at school and I was like a little intimidated and I got on the bus first and I had seen you walking around the neighborhood in your sports bra, (laughs) which actually blows my mind because now you're always in a sports bra. (laughs) And I was in biker shorts. I was like checking you out, out, out the window and I was like, who does she think she is? Like you were just so confident in your sports bra walking around. And then we get on the bus the first day and you walk on the bus wearing like a Britney Spears, like plaid skirt. It was during that moment. I think it was that moment. Mm-hmm. But anyways, it was literally every Knee highs. Knee highs. Like, I mean, you were young to be wearing that. <laughs> but I was like, oh my God, who is she? And I was wearing like an oversized grungy t-shirt with two different Converse. And I was just like, can you sign my shoe? <laughs> like the weirdest thing, but that's like when we actually started becoming friends. And then we lived a, literally like one minute from each other. So we spent every day together from that moment forward, mm-hmm. every day. I think that was when I, I put a, a Q&A box up, just asking like what questions people wanted. And I think a lot of people were like, like, how did it start? How did it start? Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of it was, well, it was convenience. We were so close, like we could walk to each other's houses. But then also like my my family, like immediate, you had five siblings. Mm-hmm. So your house was more chaotic and your mom was well, four a single. Well, four at that time. Yeah, your mom was a single mom. And you, my mom like took you in, like whatever you needed um, and my dad. And you literally became like my sister. Mm-hmm. I mean, they treated me sometimes like you were the actual child and I wasn't. <laughs> it's so, true. So um, our house had like a lot of food and 
all the best snack. My mom grew up like really poor. So like she bought us, like she overdid the food thing, I think making up for what she couldn't have. Mm -hmm. So we had the best snacks and it showed. (laughs) That (laughs) is my new cut. (laughs) So we, you were always over. You did like family vacations with me because it was just my brother and I. So it was a lot easier to bring you along rather than, you know, you had four siblings. That's a lot to, to bring another kid. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of where it started. I mean, to really break it down, I think a lot of the reason why I gravitated towards like you and your mom and like being at your house is because there was this level of, well, like, first of all, it was like family. Mm -hmm. Like you guys always did things as a family. You had like dinners together and every night my mom cooked. And also just this like, like foundation of just feeling like safe and secure. Yeah. And, and actually, I think that's one of the reasons that I think Noah has been so great for you is he's like a very reliable, stable person. Mm -hmm. And like, that's the first thing I realized about him. And I was like, oh my God, he's like the one for her because he was stable and he's reliable. Like he's even reliable for me. Yeah. He shows up for everyone. He does. So. But it, you know, I think this is probably something I don't talk a ton about. And I felt like if there's anyone to really like go there with, it's you because like you yeah, saw it. I like saw you that. saw truly how um, I was raised and how I was brought up. And, and I think there was just, you know, my mom worked yeah. three jobs, I yeah. believed. Um, and my dad had moved out at this point was working a lot too. And there just like, wasn't a lot of no parental guidance no. or well, support. And I think we judged that for years until you become a parent, right? Mm-hmm. Now we're like, you know, I have one, you have two. It's so much work. Oh my God. That it's like, okay, now we get it. You were doing it all. Right. Literally. Yeah. I mean, my our parents were doing the best that they could. But I think what it did is it like, I would, I like lived at your house. Lived. I mean, we had a sleepover every night. Like I stayed at your house during school night. Every night. You My mom drove us to school every morning. Every morning. And we would stop at Burger King for McDonald's. Live. (laughs) But you would never stay at my house. I did like once every few weeks just because your mom's like, you can't stay the night anymore. So we were like, oh man, like we're going to have to go to your house now. (laughs) And I'd wake up with like a ferret in my hair. (laughs) You can share why you hated staying. I just called it like a zoo because it it literally was. It's not like it was like chaotic. There were animals everywhere. There were animals everywhere. But it was a little chaotic. Yeah. And you had like, uh, yeah. (laughs) You can say it. It's okay. It's just, you know, I was used to like more like, name brand cereal or like hair care products. <laughs> Everything was generic. Everything was, and it's not like a judging yeah. at all, but you know, it was just different. It was like chaotic. There was a lot of animals, kids, and yeah. And like we were taking care of each other. Yeah. And your mom was just working a lot. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget you and your sisters fighting in the car. Oh, yeah. And your mom would just drive the car like nothing was happening. <laughs> it was like she had her little hands. I will never forget it. Like I can see her hands on the wheel. just And her thumbs. And her thumbs. <laughs> and then it was like I was in the middle just like this is happening. And Becky and I were going at it. Yeah. Yeah. As per usual. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. Well, we don't really know quite like that. We're just like not afraid to say what we feel. To yeah. each other, which, which is, is actually why our friendships lasted this long. We say everything, everything. You should have just seen the text I sent her in the Uber. Everything, like there's just because we're we are so comfortable doing that. We don't yes each other. Mm-hmm. We're we keep it so real because you need that person in your life that's you, going to just like when you call them, they're like no. No, sis, like, this is not it. <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> yes, I know you do that for me often. And I do it for you too. You do. I mean, you're like the person I call when I want the truth. Mm-hmm. You know? I think so many people are afraid to say the things to their friends. And it's like, that's not authentic. If you, you know, I, I know like we, we've been talking a lot about like quantity over, no, quality over quantity. Yes. And it's so important to eat with friendships, with fashion, with everything. Mm -hmm. I have, and you have, you know, a small circle, but they are like tried and true. You know? I mean, I feel like I have a lot of friends. They're acquaintances. <laughs> Here she goes. I have a lot of friends, but I think what you learn over the years, especially when, like, after having kids, like, you have different friends for different reasons. Absolutely. Like, not everyone. And I think this is where a lot of people put unnecessary pressure horrible a lot of their relationships yes friendships shouldn't be hard I don't think they should they should not be and you have friends for different things yes you you are like a ride or die so I don't I don't put you in a category but I have friends that I like call like hey I want to go on a trip okay book the flight you have friends that will go with you for medical stuff you have you just have a friend for all different things. And I think we put pressure and you have to just realize like that's maybe not the person for that. Right. And the sooner you realize, then like you become closer to those people. Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing that I've realized and evolved from with a lot of my relationships is like not expecting something from someone who's, yeah, they're not going to, be that person for you. So like, no. I think a lot of people just expect everything from everyone and then are like constantly disappointed or stop being friends with someone because... Yeah. Which I mean is you get to a point where some relationships just like aren't worth the, the drama or the it's toxic. Mm -hmm. Like just because you've been friends a long time doesn't mean you have to stay <clears throat> friends. Oh, 100%. It's... Like, time doesn't mean you're a great friend. No. Or so, that you're meant to, to continue be. being friends. Yeah. If so you cut me off, I will come for you. <laughs> I'll find you. <laughs> well, okay. So let's bring it back because I feel... Okay. So, like, growing up together, there were definitely moments where I think, too, um, when you have a friendship where like mm -hmm. there's one friendship that there's just like more stability in the home and then there's another friendship with instability like I'm sure you remember this day but do you remember when we were on the bus mm -hmm. and I believe we were in fifth grade mm -hmm. and I was like we're moving I'm moving tomorrow yeah and you were like what and yeah. I'm like yeah I know we're we're going to move it was like the middle of the school year. Um, and I just remember literally being like, it was like my world got like picked up and uh -huh. shifted. Um, my sisters and I moved with a fr one of my mom's friends for a year. And I just remember like coming back and just feeling this almost like being back home, like mm -hmm. being with you guys. Yeah. I don't even know if you really remember I don't remember, remember this. I don't remember you leaving. I do remember you telling me, but I don't remember now you leaving. Really? Yeah. Maybe I like blacked it out because I was probably yeah. lost. <laughs> I was probably like mate, trying to find like new friends. That... Yeah. I mean, I went to school at a different school for wow. a whole year. How do I not remember this? I remember a lot. I don't know. But I think it's like, you know, growing up with someone and then... Like you do everything together and then to like truly blossoming into adult mm -hmm. after school. Yeah. Because after high school, I went to community college. Mm -hmm. You didn't go to Syracuse University Not right yet. away. I went, but you I moved went to, to the campus. Well, I moved, well, yeah. And then I also moved to Florida for a year. 
Right. And moved back. And I, that's when I enrolled at Syracuse. But you were already in New York at that time. Right. So we did go through phases where we, we were not in the same place. And I told you, like, I think it was your bachelorette weekend. It was really hard for me. When you moved to New York, I saw like all of these new friendships and I was so jealous and insecure. And it, I didn't, and then I didn't, I hated it at first. But then I realized later on, I was grateful for those people because they mm-hmm. loved you. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know why I had that, but I think when you're with someone every single day and then all of a sudden they're like in a new life, it makes you like jealous. I don't know. Not now. I'm a different, I mean, I was young. Right. But I was so like, oh, she has new friends. And I thought you were going to like forget about me. But then I was like, these, these girls are great. Like they're amazing. And I saw like how much they loved you. And I was happy you had someone, a lot of people. I mean, we had, we, this was definitely a question too. A lot of people ask is like how we've maintained our friendship Mm -hmm. over all of these years. And like, if there were ever any like rough patches or us. Well, there were, there were periods where like we completely disconnected. Yeah. I think when you moved to New York, there was some definite, I was dating someone who was toxic and he did not like our friendship. And so he tried to break it up. And would say that I was trying to hit on him. Yeah, he like called me. Oh, I saw her like at Marquee and she hit on me. And like, I didn't believe it, but this was an eating disorder era. This was my biggest insecurity. Like, I would never forget visiting you in the Hamptons. You were working at Dune and we went to Polo. I went, I drank all day, went home, ate dinner, went for a run, drank more. And I was, you know, I was drinking. I was younger. I was eating very little calories. I was working out. I was running 11 miles a day. I was in a bad place. <clears throat> and he brought a lot of that out. Like I, I told you, like he walked in on me masturbating once and he literally said, oh my God, you have cellulite. Like that is, that will put anyone in a spiral. Mm-hmm. And I was just in a dark place. And because of that, I was insecure. And I, it wasn't even just you I was insecure about. I was insecure about the girl making my coffee, like everyone. It was just, you know, it was a bad time for me. And I think if I would have stayed with him, we would not be friends right now. Oh, we absolutely would not. Which is terrible. But he was toxic. I mean, I had to go to therapy for two years to get past that relationship. So... I mean, I remember it so vividly when I was working at the Chanel counter in Bloomingdale's and you guys like came in mm-hmm. and I just remember being like, who the energy. are you? Like yeah, you were energy. so different. So different. I actually, he like controlled what I wore. So I didn't for years. I couldn't shop for myself. Like I was like, I don't even know what to wear. I don't know what to eat. Like it's, it was so, it was the first time in my life I went to therapy. And I was, I was at, at Syracuse and I went to the therapist there and I was like, grown men don't change. That's like what she kind of said to me unless they want to. And that was like it. And then I literally moved to Florida to get away from him. And then we, we like, yeah, came back together. A hundred percent. Like that was it. That was probably the most time I think we were disconnected. A hundred percent. Yeah. Right. Like that was, that was it. Well, because he was like brainwashing you to think for everything in my life and like that I was against you and jealous of you and yeah. Um, wanted him. It was just like this really twisted. Yeah. Situation, which brings me to, you know, I think there are like two types of people where like some Like the one person like almost molds to their partner Mm -hmm. when you start dating someone new. Like we all know those people and those friends who it's like they are, you know, with you all of the time, calling you, making friends. And then the second they have a boyfriend, they like leave you in the dust. They drop you like it's hot. (laughs) And then they come back around like, please hang out with me. I'm single now. I need a friend. Right. And then there's the friend who like always kind of maintains this sense of independence. And I feel like growing up, like you had a tendency to be the first girl. 
to to mold. Oh, to absolutely. Your, like you went through. It's like I remember you dated a skater guy. You oh, were I became, like skater, yeah, I and then to go it to was like, like band practice, and then there was more goth, and yeah. then it was like my outfits changed, preppy, and then it was right, like a hip hop era. I just remember kind of always mm-hmm. through line, just like yeah, pretty much kind of always. You were the same, similar. You were the same, like always. You never, you never changed with who you were dating. I didn't get that. Vibe. You don't think so? No, you've always been really strong and independent. I mean, I think so. Yeah. I mean, you didn't really go through phases. You're still wearing a sports bra. <laughs> <laughs> but then growing and seeing like, you know, I think for me, like seeing you evolve away from like, even when it comes to career stuff where yes. like you also would like drop things to work for your partner's oh, yeah, businesses. Was, and I was you know, always kind of like, no. And you never did that. But it took like, I mean, I'm happy to talk about my trauma, but, you know, I was in a six-year relationship. I left my career for him. I came home from a girl's trip from Nashville to literally him moved out and he left a letter for me. And I had given up so much for him. Like I thought this was it for me. And I didn't. I I never did. You didn't. And I was so traumatized by that. Like you come home and your stuff's like his stuff's out. There's a letter for you, a three page letter of like, I don't think I want to marry you anymore after six years. It's like, well, didn't you know that a while ago? He did. He did. And he used me and he wasted my time. But you knew too. And I knew because I, you know, again, I'm like, I, I saw positives and that's been like a little bit of an issue. I saw positives in the first person. Um, and that actually is like what I think changed me. I realized in that moment because I was broken and you were working for him too. Yes, but actually I was, but then about six months before that happened, I had launched my business Mm -hmm. and that's, what's crazy is I didn't see it coming. And, you know, I ended up, um, it was great because I had already launched and I was already working on myself But it's a huge lesson, like never give up yourself. And you've never, you've always maintained that. And, you know, I was like, okay, I need to do this. And you and Noah were great during that time. I mean, you guys, like I was coming here every month, spending time with you. And there's a song, like, I needed to lose you to love me. That, that's, that hits hard. Mm -hmm. That's when I, like, I, because he also never made me feel loved. And I was like insecure and like, I didn't, I didn't really feel like, like, why did, why doesn't he want to marry me? Like a lot of girls go through that. Like, why is he not asking me after six years? But it's not about you. It's about them. That's their issue. And that took a lot to learn. But now I know like he wasn't my person and you knew. Oh, I knew. But I know now, you know, more than ever. Right. Right. So I remember you calling me and you were hysterical. And I just like listened yeah. because I was like, what am I going to say? You yeah. know, like I told you. So I, I listened and then I said, you know, I feel, I feel as if he has been telling you this for, for years time. and as hard as it was, and it was very traumatic especially the way it all went down. But it was like such a blessing. Yeah. Now, I mean, I, now my focus is like my daughter, my career. And, you know, she was always my focus, but like more than ever, I was like, this is about me. You have to love yourself first. We talk about this all the time. It starts inward, inside. You are not able to love someone else unless you love yourself. And everyone, I I feel like so many people look to their partner to make them happy. Yeah, you can't. Like no one's bringing you, like people can spark joy. They can add addition. They can add that. But you know, you have to love yourself. Happiness starts with you. There's one person. And if you're not happy, you can't show up for everyone else. I mean, you know, I I know how you show up. Yeah. You've done all the work. I mean, continue to do it because, okay, I feel like you really need to like break it down, Chris, and just be a hundred on, Mm -hmm. (laughs) because they think people just, 
you know, I've had people say like, oh, you're just so calm and like, no, you've done the work. No, but like you also know, like I think perfect example. Last Last night, night, I lost my shit. Yeah. I was like, you saw probably three variations of me in Uh the span of an hour. Yeah. Just, you know, been alone with the kids, doing everything from pickups, drop-offs, lunch. Food, everything. To dinner, to bed, to bath. Yeah. Which I, I told you, I was like, I love so many elements, but it's like when you don't have space to... Well, also, you're a working mom. I mean, yeah. that in itself, you're... And you're like one of the hardest workers I've ever met. You give it all. So, I mean, that's for anyone is a lot. I lost it. Yeah. I lost it last night. And I feel but like... But I mean, they were being a little naughty. <laughs> you think? She's like, do you want more? I'm like, yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> I love my daughter. Uh, but she's now 13. So I'm in the teenage years. Oof. To all the moms in the teenage years, I feel you. They are hormonal. (laughs) She's my best friend one minute and the next minute I'm cringy. So (laughs) I'm like, I'm pretty cool. Pretty cool mom. (laughs) So, yeah. I hope they know that one Good luck. Call me then when you go through the teenage years. Oh, I will. You know I will. But can you just really share like me, the maybe the me that... Because I think people, you're very think misunderstood. They know you. They do because right? social media makes you think you know people, right? But you're very misunderstood, even from your beginnings. I mean, you've been very honest about where you came from, which I love about you. Most people in your position would try to be someone they're not, and I I really respect that. And you you actually are very transparent with where you started. And we we worked our first job on a farm at 14. Our parents actually had to sign. They're like, why do you want to work on a farm? We're like, we want actually free vegetables and fruit. So we got to take home free fruit and veggies. Do you I remember feel that? like I worked on the farm and all I you ate, did was sit and eat the strawberries. Yeah, I the and strawberries. I would literally be like, girlfriend, let's go. I love the strawberries. Well, because we had to finish a row before we could Before eat. we had lunch. Yeah. And it was like, you were just like... I was like dragging and dragging. You always actually (laughs) covered my ass in all of life until we were adults. I mean, we got bullied pretty bad. And you always like, I wasn't afraid because I knew that you would actually fight them back for me. And I had never been in a fight, still haven't. And you always had my back. So yeah, we worked on this farm. You did the picking. I did the eating. (laughs) And then... um, You've always worked like you, you were, you bought your first car. Um, you hustled when you moved to New York, you always had like three jobs. And I think it's easy to look at your life and be like, oh, her husband's successful. And, but no, it, you could be sitting home doing nothing with a nanny and help and just not working, but you, you actually work harder than anyone I know. So I'm here to put the rumors straight. You are a hard worker and you've always done that. You always have like been like save money and you've been really great with that. And I mean, clearly this Uber situation is an example because you, you know, and you even ride the subway. I love the subway. You're very humble. It's never left you. You know? I mean, I think that was, thank you. Very humble. I think when <clears throat> things started to really change for me, I made this commitment to myself mm-hmm. that I never wanted to lose sight of who I was, mm-hmm. of where I came from. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's really easy to see what someone has. It's glamorous. And yeah, maybe it's success or you're just like the it girl of the moment, but like what's here today can be gone tomorrow. 100%. And to never lose sight of who you are at your core, like yeah. what you, like your success or what you have does not define you. you. It can literally be gone in a minute. I can all change. So to never forget like, who you are at your core. And I think it was actually our nanny, our nanny who was like, who is your, 
Like if you could pick in your life, like who's your ultimate person? And I'm like, listen, I have amazing friends, but there's just something about like feeling like I'm at home when yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, we're very safe. There's also not a lot of people that I not like that I want even in my home. Like yeah. I'm very, I can appear very public, but I'm actually rather You're very private. Private, and I'm not the most trusting person. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that, you know, when I'm with you, it's like slept over last night. We got yeah. ready together. I can tell you when you annoy me. Yeah. Or I know, you know, I actually know you now, like well enough that I know like, okay, now I'm going to go to my room. You know, I wish you knew it in the Uber when you <laughs> wouldn't stop talking, trying to ground I mean, I on talk the way to here. Everyone. I, I think it's like a positive, but I mean, I will literally talk to anyone like I know it's great I think, and I will too, but there's a time and place. <laughs> I, I am like, I will talk to anyone who will talk to me. And I, yeah, so, um, but yeah, I actually, I mean, I, I love staying with you when I'm here because I do feel like it brings us back to like our getting ready together every day and it's just more fun. It's so fun, but it's also just, you know, I feel like it's not every single person you're going to do that with. Yeah. I also like jump in and like take Eleanor, read her a book. Like I try to help you too, especially last night. I was like, I'll I, take one kid, you take one kid. I think you were scared. You definitely knew I was, yeah. I was done, but I, I like, I think that's kind of where I was going with to share maybe a side of me that people don't see that you've seen so many times over that it's not all like meditative and peaceful. No, and you then... have like a side of you that's like a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not scared of it anymore because I'm so used to it. But I think that you really like you, you, when you say I do the work, like you actually mean it. You have done the work and you've built your entire business around it, like helping others and showing them how to show up for themselves and how to change that. Like what you, how you grew up or what your history is, it doesn't, it's not your future. So I think you've done a really great job about, you know, showing you are doing the work. And there's days that you need to do more, but <laughs> there's days you do too. And oh, I been, definitely do. We've been working on that. Yeah. I mean, I have anxiety that I don't take care of and ADD that I don't take care of. I'm getting better. You are getting better because you've also hit a point where you want to change. Yeah. It gets worse before it gets better, I think. That's what I tell myself. Maybe not. I mean, I think it just gets to a point where you no longer want to tolerate that. Yeah. Way well, it's of debilitating. Being, which doesn't mean you, like, I don't know that people will, will choose anxiety. No, you know, don't. but I think there's coping mechanisms. Absolutely. There's so many things. There's that help. medication, there's, you know, but I yeah. think it's asking yourself what could really help you or, a doctor, a therapist. Totally. I, I don't do therapy. I was telling her this. We were actually talking about this last night that I I think as your friend, it could be yep, really helpful. Because I think people also mistaken their friends as their, their therapists and yeah, they're no. not. No. I mean, I think, yeah, you can talk to some friends, but some friends have a hidden agenda. Like some friends tell like tell me more. Well, there's like the hater friends, the frenemies. We all have them. Oof. You're very verbal with me about certain people. Yeah, in my there's, life. Fr there's people like in your life that are definitely opportunist or they're just like the friends that they want something from you constantly or they have like something up their sleeve. We all know those people. Right. And you're very giving until you're not, but they haven't seen it. So what do you do when you, when you feel that? I usually, well, you know, like there's been a few of your friends over the years that like barely like talk to me. Like they won't even look at me. Like I'm just like, who's that? Like the, your childhood friend, whatever, which I have a huge problem with. Cause my, my number one thing is like, be nice to everyone. Always. Like I, it's so much easier to be kind than not. And like, I never tell you because I'm not that type of person to be like, this person's a jerk or you know, there, but now I feel like it, I'd let you figure it out because you find, you figure it out really quick. And then you call me and I'm like, that's when I tell you, you call me and you're like, this happened. I'm like, 
yeah, I saw that coming. This is why. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's true. But I don't tell you at first because I'm like, she'll she'll figure it out, you know. Noah and Chris and I were sitting together before this. And I mean, you guys were like fully going into like roasting me. And I was like, hold on a second. Like, well, what are we doing here? Noah and I know you more like better than anyone. And I think him and I are so similar in a lot of ways. And so, you know, someone asked a question. I The question was, um, it was something about like a side of you that what what's a side of you, what's a side of me that really only you've seen yeah or like maybe people wouldn't or know. that no it said that it annoys me oh yeah and i i mean you'd more likely be annoyed at me most of the time but the thing that i think noah and i said is just and he agreed is like you get like you'll meet someone you get very into them and then like, I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, either I like him into him too or I'm not. And then a week later, I'm like, oh, how? And you're like, yeah, I don't like that person anymore. <laughs> but it's, you're not fake. You're the it's, most authentic person. I don't know that it's a week. <laughs> it takes a little bit of time. But I think you get like very passionate about people and then you see the truth and right. you're so, you're so um, protective and of yourself. You have to be of your energy, of people. and you're like, oh, now I see. Yeah. Again, I would never tell you before. I let you see it. But I can't keep up sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, wait, we're not into this person anymore. I don't I need think to it's know. necessarily no, like it's not that always bad. people. No, it could be things. It's things. It's, it's things. maybe like. Yeah, it's things. I'm like, oh my God, I, I'm so into this jean brand you told me about. And then you're like, oh, we don't like those. We don't like that brand anymore. And I'm like, I, okay, now I'm not cool after a week. <laughs> can't keep up. <laughs> but it's not fake because you've maintained your, look at your business. You've never changed your, you know, it's the same method as it always has been. Mm -hmm. And it works. Everyone, it works. When I follow it, you know, I get naughty. And then I know you just try other things and then you're like, always unhappy. come back. I always come back. And I'm like, just try it, like commit to it. And then you'll yeah. see. Mine is commitment. You have seen changes. Though. Absolutely. I mean, I, I tell everyone like this, this is actually the one thing I do longer. I've done longer than anything. I believe in it. Do you think I've changed? Oh, uh, well, yes Be honest. and honest. No. I mean, you're a better person. You know, I think. You are a better person. I mean, you maybe sometimes, I mean, you get a lot of people coming up to you on the street. That has to change someone a little bit. I mean, if mm -hmm. someone came up to me every time I walked down the street, I'd probably be a little, mm -hmm. you know, but I think you've, you've remained, you've done the work. So like, I think the person was always there, but now the person is the new evolved Melissa. You, I, without a doubt, it does change you. I was talking to you about this, I think, last night that it's like, <clears throat> you know, I think when you are, for me, it's like, I'm just so aware that at any time or any place, there could potentially be someone who recognizes me yeah. or is videoing yeah. or recording something I'm saying. Like, it does change how... I am yeah. like in the public. Um, well, you're, you know, you have to almost like look over your shoulder. Yeah, totally. Which like, it's, it's hard. Yeah. I think it just naturally does make you shift a different gear when you're out in public, which I don't think is, is fake. It's just a heightened self-awareness of like making sure you're, yeah, you know, really oh putting your best foot forward. And you yeah. know what? The truth is, you guys, like, if there was a camera on me last night, like, I would be canceled today. Totally. And I think that's just something we all need to normalize. We about have to normalize. People in the public eye is, you think this person, you know, it's like, because they are a meditation teacher mm -hmm. or they teach yoga that, like, that's the only version of them. 
And like, we all have these sides of ourselves. And like, to me, it's like these like inner demons, if you will, yeah. that are going to come out. Yeah. And for us to just put people on these pedestals, like, can we just, can no. we just stop doing that? No. I <laughs> can agree. We not do that. Cause like no one's freaking perfect. And I mean, I literally just sent you a text in the car. Can you please shut the fuck up? <laughs> because I'm trying to ground. Yeah. But like, that's honestly who I am at my core yeah. is like super direct. Yeah. I'm not being like you and I've been friends for so many years. Like we can say those things. You have to be able We're to have people like in your life that you we can, can say, say the real shit to. Yeah. Like you need more of that. There's just so many fake phony friendships. And I think with this era of a lot of social media relationships, which I've made, I've made a lot Great of friends, friends totally. and I've made a lot of fake friends. Same. Through social. Yeah. Let's call it what it is. I think being like, I think 2024 for me is like the year of just like, I'm, I'm not unhinged, but I'm, I'm saying what I want to say. I'm not, I don't want to hold back anymore. It feels fake. It you is know, fake. I just want to be me. And if you don't like it, you don't like it. I'm not for you. We're not for everybody. I mean, I've, I've noticed that with you. I've noticed it with myself too. Just like, is it because we're getting older? Because they I say, let you, you know. Just, yeah, you care less. You care about less. About what everyone thinks. And everyone has something to say about every Everything. single thing every person does. Yeah. And it's so draining. Like, I just, yeah. Like, I, I just think we need to, instead of inspecting everyone under, um, under yeah. this microscope, mm-hmm. like, turn the lens on yourself. Yeah. Totally. Like, and look at the way you're showing up, how you're, you know, interacting with people. I know yeah. I'm not always perfect and I'm not here to ever paint a picture that I am. No, everyone on the internet's like so quick to judge with like one little mistake, but they have mistakes too. You're just not in the public eye, maybe. But number one for me this year is like self-awareness. I, it's become a pet peeve of mine. Like people that are not self-aware, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving them in 2023. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how to enhance your self-awareness? I'm talking to you. Um, I don't, but... You are a super self-aware person, but I think a way to strengthen this even more is through meditation. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be one practice, but I, I you know, I, I know person, personally through my own experience that the heightened factors and self-awareness and even strengthening your intuition are so profound mm-hmm. from a consistent meditation practice, which is also why I think I'm at a point in my life where I'm like, like I just said, like if the camera was on me all day, I would legitimately be gone. They'd yeah. be like, get her off the internet. Or maybe not. Or maybe people would like it. <laughs> maybe people want to see more raw. I think this is the year of like raw. You know, I, I think we can all relate more to it. Do you really want to see someone who's like perfect all the time? It makes you feel like shit about yourself. Yeah, no, it does. You know, not that I, I don't compare because I think comparison is the thief of joy. That's one of my favorite sayings, as you know. It's true. I think that we, it's so easy to sit on Insta and be like, I don't have her house. I don't have her work and I don't have her car. I don't have, and honestly, it's, it's not good for anyone, you know, it's because that person's maybe not happy either. Right. So I think, you know, focus on what you have. You wake up every day with your health, your children, whatever it is, and focus on that, right? That changes everything. Everything. Yeah. Whenever I, I'm in a super anxious place, I find, I mean, there's studies on this, um, definitely bringing an expert on on this topic that like social media can amplify those emotions 100%. tenfold and just avoiding the time, the space, the scroll, like the overconsumption. It can change your whole life. Yeah. Well, look at me when I was like dying to get engaged and that was like my goal, like my focus. I would just constantly see people getting engaged. It's like you see it even more. Right. And I'm seeing it like, it's like you're putting the universe, you're getting it, you're getting it and you're seeing every other person getting engaged. And like every time someone got engaged, I felt like sick. 
where I should feel happy for them. Because, you know, I'm like a very positive person. But that's comparison. Mm -hmm. And you're like, why not me? What's wrong with me? So much of that is shift for me. Now I'm like, if you don't want to get engaged with me, I don't even want to, I don't give a shit. Do you want to be married? I do. I don't want more kids, but marriage is important to me. But I also see a lot of people getting divorced and that's not, I just don't want that. So I also don't want to marry someone just to marry them. And I don't want to get married just to get married. It has to be right. I love your boyfriend. Is he's great? He's like my favorite boyfriend. He's great. You've but ever he's dated. never been married, right? You know, and so, he doesn't have kids or want kids. Yeah, which is important to me because for a while after I was dating and I would start dating these guys and they would say, "Oh, they wanted kids," and I wouldn't lie to them, but I think I was saying that I wanted more kids to appease them, which a lot of people do that. They go, they date someone, and they don't really want to be married ever, but they they think, "Oh, maybe I could do it." So for me, I was like, oh, maybe I could have more kids. But then the minute that relationship ended, my last one, I was like, wow, I don't want any more kids. <laughs> I, I think I turned 40. And I was like, oh, my God, I've been lying. Not really. It wasn't like per I wasn't on purpose. But I've been lying to myself and them because I'm actually done here. This chapter's <laughs> closed. <laughs> and now I know. And like, I remember when you wanted a third kid and you called me and I was like, do not do that. You are so busy. You're going to regret it. And it's just so, it's a lot. I think it was not even me necessarily knowing if I wanted a third. It's, I think a lot of people do get in your head and then it makes you feel like the clock is ticking yeah, and you you're start like freaking out. This is it. Like I'm 40. Mm -hmm. Where I love 40. Love. Love. Girls, Best. if you're if you're scared about 40, don't be. No. 40 is so fun. Okay, we are going to hold up a photo <laughs> yes. of Chris and I in Before. our 20s. Yes. We look way better now. Way better. We're more like, confident. It's confident. Our style is better. Our hair was not. Our hair was... We dyed our hair... Out of a box. Blonde. It was yellow. And yellow. we both cut our hair up to it's our shoulders. Short. It was, I'm, I have really thick hair. That's not it for me. We've done, a, we've really had a lot of firsts together. We lost our virginity the same night. <laughs> same house. We planned it. We're like, okay, tonight's the night, sis. We're going to get it. <laughs> and we went in like different floors of the house. And it yeah, happened. My dad's house. Sorry, dad. Sorry, we dad. We told him. He was like, oh, God. <laughs> same night he was out of town. We're like, this is our night. And then after we're like, did you do it? We both did it. And that was Safely. It. Safely. Safely. We were safe and we did it. And that was history. <laughs> we also... We, we pierced our belly buttons we together. We pierced our belly buttons together. We convinced my mom. We had pictures taken like... All in milk. Together. Like Remember when that? you're... Like sibling photos. Yeah, like but creepy ones. Like with your hand so up here. so bad. We did okay, everything. We need to pull everything out. Oh, yeah. Because we're really here to share that it just keeps getting better. It keeps getting better. I mean, I, you know, I found my career at You're 35. You're the most confident, by the way, with this look and this vibe is so, I cannot wait to get I, the whole The look. fact that you were like, your, I'm jealous of your no, outfit. No, I'm obsessed with your outfit I today. was like, you, know, you have to bring it if you come on this podcast, okay? <laughs> and I was like, when I was planning my look, I was like, I have to do like Melissa vibe. You were in my head. But my style has changed. Can we talk about what you do? Because yeah. you... I found I, myself. She found herself. You guys... At 35. Let me just break it down a little bit because you were super timid, very insecure. Yeah. I feel like every time we, from childhood getting together, truly through adulthood, um, it was like, what am I going to wear? Uh, I don't like my... Like, can I was you so do hard this? on myself. Always. I'm still learning self-love. Yeah, you are. Because, you know, I go through phases, but it's a forever thing mm -hmm. to learn. It is. But you've come a long way from, I feel like, being this form of, like, a follower, oh, in a sense. Absolutely. And following, like, your partners into, like, mm -hmm. their careers. And then, like, somehow you know more about their career than, like, what you loved. And I'm like, what yeah. are you doing? Um, but, like, when you love someone and someone really is your friend, you I think you just, like you said, you don't necessarily call out when people are shady or opportunity. If someone has a friend, or like your best friend has a friend that sucks, like they have to go through the motions and figure that they out figure themselves. Out. But you have, I'm so freaking proud of you. I know. 
I was, tell us what you're doing. I and cold turkey, like never, I've never assisted anyone. I was like, I want to be a stylist. And it kind of happened by accident. And I just like went on Instagram and I had done all the back work to start my business. And I just fully was like, I'm launching a styling business. And I went for it. And, and you're so busy. So busy. I've done some cool stuff. And I found myself. It's what makes me happy. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like I can say that. I wake up every day and I actually do what I love. Who Like most people can't say that. You can say that. But a lot can't. I know. And it's funny. I used to have this horrible fe fear of public speaking. And I remember at your wedding, you were like a few weeks before, you're like, oh yeah, you don't have to do a speech because I was a maid of honor for people that don't know. And you called me a few weeks before and you're like, you have to speak. And I was like, what? And I like almost canceled. I was like, can I get out of this? Can I not be in the wedding? <laughs> can someone step in? And you were like, no, you have to. And I was like, oh, okay. And I like blacked out like that whole speech. It was pretty much horrible. I think I remember. And because of that now, it's so interesting. I speak a lot for work. Like I do presentations on styling with groups. I'm not scared because I'm speaking about something I love. So it's real. Not that I don't love you. That sounds like I didn't love you in the speech. <laughs> <isn't real. laughs> no, no, I know. But it's scary it's like, to speak. And, and well, there were I mean, 300 people there. At least, maybe 500. No, and it, it wasn't And there many. were some celebrities in the crowd that I was like, I can't mess this up. You know, <laughs> like, there's some people here. No names mentioned. Can we just talk about how you started the speech? Because it was epic. Well, we showered <laughs> together our whole lives. And <laughs> I was like, just, like, we showered to together because it was like easier and it was fun. Actually, I think it's because we didn't want to be separated. <laughs> I mean, you guys, like, we didn't want to have a minute apart. Twin bed for yeah. like 10 years. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you know, we showered together, like not to save water. And everyone's like, <laughs> Noah's mom was like. And that's how she opened. Yeah. So, so when Jason started his best man speech, his, he's like, we, didn't we did not together. shower together. <laughs> Which is great. So good. And I still like for years, Jason was like, you guys, like, are you guys going to go shower together? I mean, we actually have a shower together as adult women. <laughs> We have. <laughs> we have the same parts. It doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, so I found myself. So girls, don't give up. No. And when you find your passion, I really believe like that's when you, you start to feel alive. Alive. Your confidence right now is so good. I'm so, it just like, you I'm always just like, push yes, me. girl. I, I know. Always You're a girl's you girl, it. by the way. Thank You're you. a girl's girl. Thank you. Really. Tried and true. Those. You are. What you say is what you mean. I mean, I love lifting yeah. people up. Well, I have some, I'll be honest, there are some, very, very few friendships and relationships in my life that make me feel like there's a little bit of a competition. Yeah. And those are the ones that I dissolve. Yeah, I agree. Because there is no competition. No, no. Like friend. we can all do things to lift each other up yeah. to, I feel like I've been doing even that in the for you for space, years. And even in the wellness space, you, you have a lot of friends in this space. I'm like, I have a ton of friends that are stylist and my, you know, I live in Orlando, it's small and there's not that many of us. And the ones that don't lift you up, I'm like, I don't have time for you. There's a coffee shop on every corner for a reason. Mm. There's, because I'm not for everyone. You're not for everyone. Although I do think everyone should do your workouts, but and I think I should style everyone. No, but maybe I'm not a good fit for certain people. And I Truly. actually, I talk to people like we have an hour conversation, half an hour before they hire me. And I think that's too long. Guess to what? Clip that. I do. And I need to charge 20 minutes, more minutes Um, And also, but it's not about, it's like, are we a good fit? Right. It's energy. It's because so not, I'm not a good fit and it, maybe they're not a good fit for me. It's true. So you have to really learn that. It's like, I don't, I don't care to take money from everyone. I, I don't, I'm not a stylist to everyone. I need to know we work together so intimately. I need to know that we have, we're going to work because I don't need your energy messing up my vibe. No, <laughs> no, girl, you do not. I need all the good vibes. That's all we want. Yeah. You have been, I've shared this before. It's so funny because I feel like when I was doing a, a Q&A, one girl was like, 
you're like, you're lying about Chrissy being your stylist. And I'm like, I don't think I've ever coined you to be my stylist ever. But you're, you've always been that go-to resource for me for like every, by the way, she just did this coming into my closet and people wanted just a few styling tips. But she, the last time she was over, she's like, you have so many blazers. She's like, you cannot purchase another blazer. No, I cut the blazers out. You have so many slacks. You have no tops. Yeah, she had no top. I had no top. So I was like, okay, give me a select. Yeah, of what you need. I think a lot of, well, also, let me just back up for a second. You have amazing style. You don't need a stylist. You just sometimes need people to source or you need maybe yeah. just like, you know, you're going on a trip. You don't have time. Like, she finds everything for less. Yeah, I find I'm all about it looks for less. I work with people on any budget, like high, low. And that's I, I thrive off that because I can really that's when you become really good. Mm-hmm. When you have someone gives you like a small budget and you're like, let me find some stuff. <laughs> let me go on the hunt. Um, but with you, I think like I'm, I'm always tell Noah like what gifts to buy you. I'm good at that. Because I listened to you. So we've done some great things great together. Great gifts. You've been crushing and, that. But, you know, with you, it's more like, let me go in and like give you like little tips like that. Because when when you're in your own closet, it's overwhelming. You don't see what other people see. So I always like to tell you, like, you're missing. These are the things you're missing. Let's make a list. So whenever I have a new client, I go in their closet. We make a list of what they're missing. And then we purge some things. And then we start buying things they actually need. So usually I'll go in someone's closet and they have so much stuff. Like they have a lot of things and their spouse is like, they have too much stuff. They have a lot of stuff, but they don't have, they don't have actual outfits. Mm -hmm. They buy pieces that don't make sense. So usually when I start working with a new client, like I'm like the number one thing, a great white tee. How far does that get By the way, Every, I, that's, Everyone should have a white tee. What's your number one brand right now? Uh, or one you I, love? I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Lisette? Yeah. Love yeah, Lisette. love. Um, I don't have any. They can send me a few. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we um, love you, Lisette. Wait, I, I make everyone buy them. I'm obsessed I because I've seen them on now because I'm in everyone's closet. So I'm, I'm, I'm always exposed to brands that I don't know. And that's what I love. And then I get to learn like new brands. Um, but I love that. A great jean and a, and a great handbag can take you so far. And I always say, some people say, well, I can't really afford a great handbag. And then I go in their closet and they've got like 20 handbags. They could have bought one amazing handbag. So like splurging on things that are forever, a great crew neck cashmere sweater, black, gray. Those are things that'll take you really far, a nice belt. Mm -hmm. And the trends, I go for less. I am, can we talk about trends for a second? Ones that we'd like to dye. Yeah. Can we do, is that okay? This is but, not judgment. This is just, just not spilling you, the tea you know with what? your a trend, a trend is not for everyone. Certain things that look good on you, you're much taller than me. That trend doesn't work for me. Right. Like a skinny jean does not look good on me. It enhances, I have curves. It enhances the curves. So people skinny see jean. a trend. Well, they're, they're out, but they're never going to be out fully. You know why? High boots. Right. What so, are you going to tuck in? Right, <laughs> right. What are you talking in? It's going to be bunchy. <laughs> when you sit down, it doesn't work. But trends aren't for everyone. And we try to fit, oh, the trend, it doesn't work for you. And also, I think um, spending less on the trends and spending more on the pieces that are going to take you far and you're going to have them for a while. That's one thing I've been doing in the past like handful of years. It changes everything. Everything. Every single, like I have such great core pieces, pieces yeah. that I think I'll have forever and forever. I'll save. And though that's important. And I think, you know, we talked about this recently, you and I, everyone's looks like everyone on Instagram it's now. It's so You're, like, why everyone have their own, own identity? identity? It's like, I'm, even as a stylist, I'm bored at looking at other people because I'm like, show, like you can take the style and twist it your own. Right. You can make it your own. Instead, everyone's just walking around looking like everyone. I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored. I've never been like the You've biggest never person been a on. I've just never been really big on hopping on trends. Like one that I think really went too far. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so sorry. I'm just going to say it, is the bow in the hair. Because I think, by the way, it's, it's not even that I Have you done the bow it. in the hair? I did on one shoot yeah. that... Gabrielle, an amazing stylist I worked with for the Hamptons cover shoot. She put it in my hair. It like worked so beautifully with the horse. I liked it. I don't love the look on everyone. And Mm -hmm. I think like 
a bow just adds sweetness to some people who aren't sweet? Is that yeah. mean? Do we have to scratch that or should we keep it and just keep everything a hundred? I'm sorry. Well, but it's true. I did the bow trend once. I did it um, two years ago in Paris. Ava and rocked it really hard and I loved it. Yeah, I think if it's situational. I just, it just people got are too doing heavy. It too much. It was too, too much, much. And it was like, it didn't feel like the people that were wearing it. Yeah. And I'm like, be yourself. Yeah. Like, who cares what's hot? Like, no. stay with a, well, the foundation of who you are. Sure, add some little yeah. trendy things. Well, that's but, why I love basics. I feel like people, you go in people's closets, they don't have basics. Like, things that, if you don't have the basic things... You don't have a wardrobe. I know. I changed my basic game because of you. Yeah, you need those pieces. And so that's huge. I'll, I'll go in. I see so much like floral and print. And I'm like, you're going to wear that once and be over it. Like we need some good staple pieces. Not you. You don't have florals. I mean, you have a few, but not much. Right. It's nice to have some fun things. Yeah. But I think those are fun to have, but not a whole wardrobe. No, no, no. And print with the bow. I mean, that's different. Print's fun. It's wait, that those were some great tips. I love it. Yeah. Guys, follow Chrissy. Well, you have two I handles have two. now. Yeah. One is, well, you know, I started my personal page. I started sharing more of my business and I felt uncomfortable because over the years, you know, I have a huge passion for travel. And over the huge. years- She's traveled more than anyone I've ever met besides Noah's my mother. my second passion um, besides, you know, style. And I think that I would meet people traveling or male clients. They they don't want to see the tag, buy this link, buy this link. So I started a, a styling page separately that I feel like I can literally just share all things. Share it. Yeah. What is it? Styled by Chrissy Godwin. So. Okay. We're going to ask some questions from. Let's do it. From the Q&A. People still want to know the dark side of me. I feel like you didn't go there enough. Go. I mean, it's just. It's, dark. It's dark, but it's, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's like. It's okay. You can say it. Yeah, but it's not like I'm hiding anything. No. I'm just, you don't see it anymore as much. <laughs> That's good. I mean, so, you know, it's just, there was a level of, I think, the way that you grew up and like what you saw maybe that you were um, angry mm -hmm. and you had a lot of reason to be. Mm -hmm. You saw some shit. You went through some shit. But I think that you have really straightened it out. It's still there. I saw it last night. Yeah, the waves come. But I think you beat yourself up about it. You're not as dark as you used to be. No, I don't think I am. And but there's even... a little, there's a little in there. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I... you did, you did have some, we had some, well, you had some fights growing up. Oof, they were bad. I mean, not that I'm we were proud bullied. of it, but we, we were, bullied. were bullied. We were bullied and we, we were in this group called the Fab Five. And we, yeah, we have to talk about that. And by the way, we didn't make up the name. No, we didn't. But we were given by the older boys. We us. were a crew. We were a crew. We did everything together. We drove to school together. People wanted to know if, if I was popular. You were very popular. The, we were literally, the Fab Five was, it was actually it was for years group. later, the Fab Five lived on. There were other groups that named themselves that. We did not. We were the beginning. No, I we really not. am not a fan of like no. naming groups. Like no. I think it can that was, really well, create. We're different people than totally. we were. Totally. We're just being honest. Yeah. I mean, now we're, we would probably cringe at being in a, in a group like that. Um, the Fab Two. Just kidding. <laughs> so um, we were in this group and the girls were awful to us. And like, I was so afraid because I never. Not the girls in the Fab Five. <laughs> yes. I was so afraid of these girls. They were actually terrifying. And so like, you didn't leave my sight. Like you, I knew I was okay when you were with me because like, if, and you've always been protective of me because I was, I had a brother who was eight years younger. So I was essentially for a while an only child. And you always had my back. I mean, I think they were after me. <laughs> Not it felt you. like they were after me too. <laughs> they were because after I, me. Because I remember, <laughs> well, I remember One the person. ski club incident um, when I did a little flash. Not like me. <laughs> no, you Just were to break record, it down. So we were in ski club every year and we were... But it was like part of the school. Yeah, but you pay, it was, it was, it was part of the year. school. I could do it. Well, I did it every year. I loved it. Yeah. Um, and we were on the bus leaving. There was three huge like buses, like a tour bus size. And I think it might have been your idea. 
to flash the other boss. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I think it was yours. <laughs> you did it. I didn't. And you didn't get caught. That's true. Okay. I hope these teachers you also are watching. Have waving her boobs at yeah. me so they maybe so didn't I, see mine. I did a little and it, it, yeah, the it teacher happens. on the other bus saw her boob. Yeah. And so I had a bra on. It's not like I was full on, you know, sounds like I was bad. I was pretty good though. It's probably like the, worst the worst thing, thing I've ever you done did. ever. I was such well, a good Well, we can kid. talk about the worst thing I did. So um I Pretty much I got called into the, my mom worked at the school. So that was really bad. She, she was really mad at me. And I had to go to Saturday morning detention. I tried to say that when I lifted up my shirt, it was one layer and they both came up on accident. It didn't work. And so I got in trouble. And then I remember those girls were waiting for me when I got out. And you and my mom showed up. And they were like going to beat me up. But I don't think they were after you. Well, it felt like it. I, mean, I was terrified. <laughs> and yeah, you, but you always were like protecting me, which I, I really appreciated that because I wasn't afraid. And I mean, we obviously like that's if my daughter came home and like people were trying to beat her up. Like, I mean, can you imagine now? No. Like nowadays, I feel like back then, like this stuff happened more. I mean, I'm sure it goes on still. I mean, it does. And you see it on social media. You now. see it. But it's it, that's scary. I still haven't been in a fight. Thank God. Um. Lucky. But yeah, so one of the questions was people wanted to know how to I bring felt it about back Noah to what your first impression of Noah was. Well, you were visiting me in Orlando. Um, it was, I had just had Sloan. So I was, she was like not even one. So it was like 13 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense with timing? Yeah. And you were like, do you remember Noah? And I was like, oh, yeah, the guy who dated this girl, I remembered. Like, I remembered little details. And you were like, yeah. And I, and I like had these, I was doing like SEO at the time. And I had these huge two double computers, giant screens, like monitors. And I pulled up his face and it was like this big. And I, I was like, oh, yeah, this is Noah. Like, I was, I was like, go to Miami because he was trying to get you to meet him there. Right. I think it was like the first person you told. A hundred percent. And I was like, yeah. And I didn't really know him then. Obviously, I only met him a few times. But I immediately loved Noah because he he shows up. He's reliable. He's stable. And I remember one of the first times I went to Vegas with you guys. And you went home early because Noah and I will stay out all night. Still to this day. Till this day. And he's like, where are we going? I'm like, where are we going? And you guys, they have their own relationship. Yeah. Like Noah's been so amazing to me. And as a friend, he saves me in situations like if I need to get into a restaurant or I need a res or whatever, he's just great. And we have a lot in common. We could talk for hours about stuff. And so I remember you went home early and this was pre-marriage, pre the kids. And I'm like, this guy's a club owner. I'm going to find out about him tonight, <laughs> what he does when she leaves. <laughs> and he leave. And I never forget. I'm like on the chair, like living my best life. And I look down and Noah's playing chess <laughs> on his phone. He still Blackberry. does that. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, yep, I can go home now. This guy's clean. <laughs> and I just like, I love I love the number one thing I love about Noah is he shows up for your friends. He threw me the best 40th birthday party. And I'll never forget. Everyone was like, Melissa, you did good. He was like, you were like, I didn't even know this was coming out. This cake. I didn't know any of this. This was all Noah. And Jason was like, who is she? What did she do? And tone it down. And it like, I will never, I don't think I'll ever have a birthday party like that. It was like, honey, yes, you will. No, like that. 50th? I mean, 45th. Noah, like, get ready. It's going to get better. It was, I thought my 30th was the best at Lavo. And then <laughs> now that, I mean, he he showed up. You are such a clubber. Oh, my. Oh, I, mean, I love it. She loves I think a I'd club. be, I mean, I don't go to them as much now, but I think I could be at them. Like, I'll definitely be at like, a music festival until I'm 85. <laughs> 100%. Like, feeling the vibes of the music. <laughs> So, you, okay, before we move to rapid fire, I'm letting her unravel <laughs> some dark secrets. Are we ready to share? You have 
my deepest, darkest. Yeah, and I, I won't share. <laughs> no one tried to get that out of me. Um, so basically, I think the first time, I was very fortunate. I, I will say, like, I always got allowance and I was You like, had everything. Yeah, I will say, like, I, I'm very grateful for that now that my parents were really generous with that. You were never but a brat. Never either. a brat. It was never, like, extreme. It was just, like, what you needed and... And more. And more, yeah. So we went to the mall that we were like total mall rats. I mean, nothing's changed. I'm still at the mall like every day, but we're at the mall and we went into this department store and we go into the fitting room together because we did everything together. I mean, the shower, the fitting room. And I don't think I liked anything. So I was like, I'm not going to buy anything. And then everyone was like kind of like in that stealing phase. Well, everyone in... Our high school was, was stealing. stealing and they, they had the most amazing it. stuff. And I was like, I don't have the money for this. Like, let me try. Yeah. So I think you like put on a shirt I put on underneath. A shirt. There was no sensor. And we get to walking out. And I'm not really sure if it was clear if I knew you did that or not. I'm going to say I didn't know. I don't think I knew because you were pretty like sly about it. And I don't, recall. I don't think I knew. And then we walked because I... I think I would have bought it for you if you told me. And so we walk out and like security comes up and they're like, what did they say? Like, I think you have something that belongs to us or something. Mm -hmm. And they pull us back in the store and I'm like, what is going on? I don't have anything that belongs to you. (laughs) And then they ask you and I think you're like, oh yeah, I think you like lifted up your shirt. And we got put in this room and it was terrifying. They were like, it was all copying us. Like they were like, they were interrogating us. And our, your dad and my mom show up. And your dad just like started laughing. No, he didn't. He was upset, but I was like crying because they were mean to us. Okay. And he was mad at them. He was That's mad what it at was. Yeah. He was mad at them. And I got like. You got. Oh. So like as if you stole. As a lesson to all the young girls. If your friend is stealing, you will be arrested. So either buy it for them or leave your friend or get new friends. (laughs) Yes. So we get, I got like, I think I got like probation. Yeah, or something. We were like 15. So we weren't 16 yet. We might have been 14. And fast forward, I thought that was behind us. (laughs) Because I actually got grounded and you didn't. So I was like in so much I mean, trouble. My parents weren't really around. Yeah, I was I I was in really big trouble for that. Fast forward. And we had a very big event coming up. And we were in the mall together again. And you were like, I'm gonna go shop. And I was like, I'm gonna go get my nails done. And I'm getting my nails done and I'm calling you and I'm calling you. No answer. Finally, you call me. And you're like, we have a problem. I'm like, what kind of problem? You're like, I'm in the back of a cop car. I'm like, what? And you literally drove like cuffed and stuffed. And I go outside. I'm like, what happened? And I remember seeing you in the back of the car. I'm like, oh man, <laughs> what happened <laughs> this now? Is not a good sight. <laughs> and the guy told me like you were caught stealing bathing suits. One bathing suit it was twenty dollars. And. It like ruined our entire day because we couldn't eat. We were stuck in a police station. It was awful. It ruined my whole day. I was like lightheaded. I was having like, it was like awful. I remember I went home after and I cried all night. It was horrible. It was really awful. And I I think that was, it's not even that I didn't learn the lesson the first time. I think for me, it was, there was so much envy around people having things. Comparison. Yeah, like, you're young. I, I didn't mean, have the money to yeah to have everything everyone had. So I was like, like I remember one girl in our school. She was like the wealthiest girl, was stealing the most, and I'm like, I can do this too. Like it was just yeah. such a twisted mindset. But I can. I never did it. Say with I was terrified of my mother. Pure confidence and certainty that that was the last time that ever happened because it really just made me realize like. Mm-hmm. This is not the yeah. way. Well, you also put me in the situation. I'm twice, sorry. Two times. Luckily, I was getting my nails done the second time or I would have been like, I'm done here. Um, that might have been a friendship ender. Um, actually, one of the questions that we didn't get to was a time in our lives that we were 
not there for each other. I know mine for you. Do you know? I feel like, well, mine for you was when you had Sloan because I just didn't really understand understand like what it yeah. took to have a child. Um, I was a single mom at six months old. Yep. Um, and it was the most humbling, hardest time of my entire life. But you didn't have Benjamin yet. So I think if you don't know, you really you don't, don't know. know. That's why I always say you don't know what people are going through. When people are mean to you, they could have something really bad going on. Right. And so I think if you don't know, you don't know. Right. Right. So that was probably my, that's when I think you weren't. But I don't, it wasn't your fault. I don't think there's ever been a time that you weren't there for me. I did something right as a friend. <laughs> no, I, it's really true. I, I feel mean, good about that. Again, my situation was, it was not great. And you just didn't know. You were also here and I was in Florida. Yeah. But I think I, there was definitely a time where I feel like I had prioritized things. And look, it's like you get married, you have kids. My career um, started to really evolve. I had new friends and like, even it's like you meet new friends in the space and like, yeah, things are kind of, yeah. But I think when things when like dust settles and you look around, like there's usually not a lot of people no. standing by your side. And like you've, I mean, for me, it's like, I know this for a fact that like not only have you been there for me every step of the way, like you are my like ultimate. Like yeah, I feel whenever that I need to talk, to cry, to work through something like you're my speed dial and you've always been. But I always answer. I also wouldn't be who I am without like the support of you and your mom growing up. Like, yeah. People always ask me, you know, like, how did you get through? I think just like those really challenging, troubling times during childhood. And it was like, without a doubt from. Yeah. Like having you and and your family as like a rock in my life and like a support system that I needed to be yeah. able to see that there was a different way. Yeah. You know? And I think I think we have to like let our people know how much we love them. And I, I love that. I love you so I love much. You. You're just my like I love you forever. Everything. I like picture us being old living in like Italy together in our little <laughs> villa making our you know food and walk in the town and doing our little gossip I think it's really important to hold on to the real ones yeah and to too. also get really clear who the real ones are yeah and actually that's been a big problem in my friendships because they're like oh Melissa first Melissa first you know like you drop anything for her like I think people get a little jelly about it Mm -hmm. but that's so G, <laughs> you know? So, okay, we're going to end with one. We're not going to go full rapid fire Ooh. just because. Put pressure on. I'm in the hot no, seat. No, it's I'm just, just a simple, but complex, but I don't know. Because this podcast is called Move With Heart. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you to move with your heart? I think leading with your heart first, being open accepting love, giving love. You know, it's been a challenge for me, loving myself, but I think, I think that's it. Mm -hmm. That's it, girl. That's it. Simple. You're the freaking best. You, you're just, the best. I love you. <laughs> I love you. You guys, hold on to your real ones. Yeah. We did it. 